Today we're going to talk about amending your soil in the spring. Any vegetable garden is going to deplete your soil quite a bit, but especially indoor growing where you're growing for much longer seasons, you're growing really heavy feeder crops, and indoor growing is more prone to soil drying out, which further depletes your soil. So it's so important to amend at least once a year, and we're here to show you how to do it. Spring is usually the best time to amend your soil because summer crops are the heaviest feeders. They're gonna require the most nitrogen and phosphorus, you know, the big tomatoes. So if you amend in the spring, then you can let them feed what's in the soil and then put in your lettuces and things that require less. We recommend a soil test so you know for sure what you need and how much and then move from there. So your average soil test is gonna reference NPK, which is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and your pH. And there are several ways to correct those imbalances. And if you reference the article attached to this video, it'll give you all the details you need to make your best choices. So we always try to schedule the amending of soil and the starting out of new beds with successions of other vegetables so that year round we've got constant vegetables for all the employees in the community. So let's go to the 26th and get our carrot bed going. So we have a bit of a jungle of once beautiful flowers here and I saved the flowers because they're so nice in the spring. But I don't really want to save this as far as seeding because I have enough broccoli seeds to last me a lifetime. So uh, it's kind of done its thing now and it's time to put some carrots in. And I'm going to a root crop after this because obviously broccoli is a flower crop and we kind of rotate crops. So we're going to rip all this out and start over again. We're gonna get all the organic matter out, all the old leaves that I couldn't reach before because all of this is just food for surface decomposers and we don't want that in our domes. Things like pill bugs and stuff, we don't want that. So these are obviously just starting to flower and these just barely but they're ready, and I like carrots. Okay, so now we're gonna make sure we get all the old dead organic matter out. So first we turn the soil and get it as loosened up as possible. Usually I'll dry it out a bit to make that a little easier before I do it. And then for this carrot bed, I'm really focused on a little extra phosphorus and mycorrhiza and good bacteria adding to the soil to improve a carrot crop specifically. We did add a little bit of nitrogen because the soil appeared to be very deficient in it. Um, I didn't do a soil test, but my plants told me quite a bit and so did the soil. Always add kelp. I love kelp. It feeds the worms. It adds loads of trace minerals. It's one of my favorites. And um, then I added a little bit more soil because I want nice, big, deep carrots. Something to remember is don't breed this stuff that you're adding to your soil. Most of the dust is either irritating to the eyes or the mucous membrane, or it's got fungal spores or bacterial spores that are not good for you to have in your lungs or your eyes. So the best thing is turn your soil Add the amendments, get out of there, let it settle a bit, and then come back later and turn it in. So you'll notice that we're putting the carrots in the center bed nearest to the tank. The reason for that is because they're very long season crop, and um, it's specifically a root crop. So we don't want it to flower when the heat of summer comes in. We don't want it to get triggered. We want its soil temperature to stay very stable. So that fig tree is gonna shade that area and keep that soil temperature really stable so we can get giant carrots in the winter. I hope this video was helpful in getting the best summer crop going ever. And please refer to the article that we have attached to it and have a wonderful gardening year.